welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria, the head witch behind Bahati Life Apothecary. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about candle magic, what it is, and also I wanted to do a little extra bonus and dive into what the meaning of the flame is and what the flame is trying to tell you because energy and spirit will try to speak through you through the candle flame. So you wanna watch that and you wanna watch it closely. Now, before I get started, I do wanna say, please excuse my location at the time and the present moment and also my shitty lighting. If you are a member of the Bahati Vibe Tribe and you've been with me since day one, you know that right now in this moment, I've kind of been going through this like transformation and transition in my life, which I did set intention for and I did want and I did invite in and of course it happened sooner rather then later it happened faster than I was thinking um, and interestingly enough this is one thing that I did use candle magic in order to create this type of change and transition in my life so now here we are I am currently stationed in New Orleans which I've been loving if you don't already if you haven't seen that on my Instagram I mean my vibe here in New Orleans is way different than it was in Philadelphia but either way I'm saying all this to say that number one candle magic really does work and of course it does but number two, I don't have my normal filming equipment. I do have my camera. And also, I'm working with the bare minimum because that was one of the intentions that I set is that when I come down to New Orleans, that my life be a little bit more minimalistic and simple because that's the phase and the stage that I'm at in my life and something that is very important to me. However, of course, wherever it is that I go, I do have items that I that I brought with me. For example, my love spell, my money spell, my, my Pluto death oil, some candles that I, was, um, that I would be using, um, herbs and just my normal basic things that I have with me regardless of where I'm going where I'm traveling especially for long distance um, so again you know I apologize for things being so bare and bare minimum but at the same time I'm personally loving it so hopefully if I like it then you love it and I'm able to give you the best information as clearly as possible so that you can work your own powerful intentions from home whether you're doing it alone or you're doing it with a friend or a partner. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing that I wanna say with candle magic is that it is absolutely so powerful. It should not be taken lightly. Um, this, the reason for this is that you're working with really powerful energies outside of your, outside of working with spirit. You're working with fire, and fire has its own energy that you know is a force to be reckoned with, and that really does need to be respected. So that's something to be said. Any time when I have set intention and worked my magic using candles, everything that I have ever set the intention for has manifested, and it does come in very quickly. Now, I'm not saying that as a warning. I just want you guys to be aware of the energy that it is that you're working with and to be um, to take some time to really think about what it is that you want and what it is that you're putting out there because it will come in quickly. Working with fire in general tends to bring things in very fast and very passionately. So you want to make sure that number one, you're ready for it. And number two, that it's something that you actually want. Of course, if something comes into your life and you realize, okay, this isn't what it was that I was expecting or this isn't something that it is that I want, then you can go ahead and work your magic in order to release it, to let it go, to banish it from your life. But I can honestly say after years of using the same method it's very simple it's not crazy at all but it is very powerful that I've never had any regret when it comes to working my magic to setting intention I've never had any incredible like crazy issues or things pop off besides one time and I'll tell you about that later um, while I was while I was working my candle magic and you know I it works for me every single time that being said not everybody is at the same level of manifestation um, you know not everybody is at the same level of manifestation I just think that that's you know some people have certain strengths other people have you know other strengths in other areas we all have strengths and weaknesses setting intention and working magic and using my imagination using my intention using my words using my mind has always been something that has created incredible um, circumstances for me in my life in ways that are good and bad um, I think that this happens for a lot of people you'll see that in people who have depression or anxiety or any type of um, issues like that within their lives and you'll also see that when they set the intention for something when they put their mind to it things just miraculously kind of occur 
Um, that has always been the situation for me, but at the same time, that came with its own struggles because I didn't always fit in to every environment that it was that I was in. For example, um, you know, I didn't fit in with growing up, not that you guys are here to listen to me talk about this, but I'm just being honest. But growing up, um, you know, I was always working on magic and intention when I started realizing my personal powers and I started wanting to develop those versus the rest of my friends were boy crazy or thinking about the things that they were interested in, I couldn't relate to them on that level because I wanted to uh, direct my energy so that I could change the outcome. Meaning like I would go on power walks with my mom because she was, you know, power walking and I'd be, while I was walking with her, I'd be focusing on, okay, how can I blow out that power light? <laughs> like the lamppost that lights the streets, I was like focusing on that. Like I, I, I wanted it to blow, I wanted to blow, blow the bulb out of that, this, the street lamp. So everyone is so different. Um, I do, and I'm saying all this to say that for some people, for myself, my ability to create change and transformation and to attract into my life is very, 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 very high. You guys have heard me say this time and time again that if I set the intention for something, it will manifest in, usually it takes no longer than two, two to three weeks for it to come into my life. And the only reason why it takes that long sometimes is because there might be resistance on the other end or opposition, meaning like whoever it is or whatever it is has to kind of work itself out very quickly on my behalf. And then two to three weeks later, it will happen. If you do need help with this, um, I do try to make myself available when it comes to working with my clients, when it comes to working candle magic, but I really strongly suggest that you work really hard on your own and just practice with smaller things and then gain, as you gain strength and as you gain power, that you work for larger things like big moves across country, um, new apartments, new relationships, soulmate relationships, opportunities of a lifetime. These types of things are things that you can set the intention for, but start off really small with attracting like a $20 bill or, uh, a stranger blowing a kiss at you or attention or whatever the case is self-confidence. Okay. All right So seven minutes into this video. I'm so sorry I hope that this isn't you know too wordy, but I just want to give you guys all of the information so that you're informed We're just it's just us. It's just me and you are just hanging out in my living room right now talking about candle magic and I'm gonna show you using what it is that I have um, so that you can do your own spells so that you could do your own candle magic so that being said, the candles that I'm gonna be working with today that I'm gonna be using as an example are these two candles here. There is masculine and feminine, and I've already started working with them, and you can see that. Sorry, the lighting's really shit right now. But you can see that because the top of this candle has kind of been burned, and that's because I've already started working with them um, last night. Now, when it comes to timing of working with candles and doing your candle magic, yes, it's very important that you follow the cosmos and you follow the moon, or specific days. There's many witches that wait until a perfect time, like a perfect day, that in order to work their magic. But for example, when I decided that I was gonna work with these, I didn't wait for the perfect time on paper. I followed my intention and I followed my feeling and my gut instinct. So what happened for me was I was just praying and um, you know, I do this every day, just setting the intention for my day and whatever. And then I started feeling this you know, the tingling in my feet, in my fingers and in my hands. And I realized, oh shit, like it's time to work my magic now. Technically, I feel like we're in a waxing moon um, stage right now. At the time of me filming this, I think, don't hold me to it because my brain, I'm just getting over a head cold. So, or like some type of weird virus and my brain has been fried. Like, I'm not kidding. Um, you guys that were watching my live chat on Monday, you know this. I had to like stop it at 30 minutes in because I'm like, yeah, I can't even, I can't even formulate a sentence right now. But I am feeling better. I am feeling stronger. And one of the first ways that the universe and my energy, my spirit was telling me like, Jess, you're good again. You're feeling better now. You're feeling stronger. Work your magic was the feeling that I felt when I was writing my intention down, I had the feeling, the drive to do a little more. So that's when I pulled out these candles. Now granted, the moon phase right now is still in the phase, uh, or still in the process of growing into, you know, a full, but a full moon, we've got a full moon coming up. But <clears throat> 
but I just felt uh, the need to kind of work work with this and that's what it is that I am doing that's what it is that I've done so that's why this candle has been the top of it has been um, already started burning um, again like I was saying there's some people there's some witches who will work wait until the perfect time and in some instances I do do that as an astrologer I always look for the cosmos for for their guidance but if anything, if I feel within me the moment, the time is now for me to work my magic, I will do it. But I will also pull the chart to see what's going on in my life because those areas are very vulnerable to change and um, open to being manipulated. Manipulated. So I will um, either focus my intent and my magic on changing those areas to match what it is that I want, to match my desires, or I will factor them in in some way, shape, or form. So for example, let's say I am feeling the need to change my love life or to infuse more intimacy and connection in it or more fun or more spontaneity or whatever the case is. Um, yeah, I feel the, the desire to do that, but then I'll also see that my sixth house is being aspected. So maybe while I'm also focusing on my love, my love life and infusing more romance and spontaneity in that, I'm also um, going to set the intention that in my day-to-day -day life that I'm taking better care of myself, I'm eating better, I have fresher quality of fruits that are available instead of me going to the grocery store and finding these like lackluster fruits at best, which I hate. So, and then, so I put all of that in my magic and in my intention, and yes, you know, sometimes doing your magic is not something as crazy as, oh, I'm gonna attract my soulmate. Sometimes it's like, I want the best fruit that the grocery store or the produce um, or the farmers have to offer, and I want that to just fall into my lap. So you can set intentions for something simple as that, just to make your life just juicy, just as juicy as it possible can. Like, don't you want the best in everything? I know I do, anyways. So you have your candles. Now again, your candles do not have to be anything special. These ones are pretty intricate and pretty unique. These are candles that my mom actually gave me when I moved into my apartment here in New Orleans. Thank you so much, mom. Thank you for being a huge supporter in my belief systems and always looking out for me. But these candles are, I just love them. I mean, the, 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 the groom and the wife, come on. Are you kidding me? How could I not? And I just felt the need. I'm like, this is what I want right now. And and the other thing too is like you have a groom and you have the wife um, or the bride, but this could represent masculine energy. This could represent feminine energy. So it's all about your intention and what it symbolizes to you. Or this could be your future husband and this could be you and you guys coming together in holy matrimony, whatever it is. Or maybe this is your boyfriend and this is you as a girlfriend or maybe this is you as a man and this is your future wife, your soulmate, and you guys are coming together and you're setting the intention for that. But whatever it is, you know, the candles don't have to be anything special or specific. There are witches out there that will disagree with me, especially when it comes to working with certain colors. In my experience, I, I've only, well, not that I've only worked with, but I gravitate towards working with candles that are pure white, pure gold, or pure silver because it just comes from a pure place and the intention could be used for everything and anything. And I just notice that it lasts longer versus if you're trying to draw in um, money. Hold on, let me focus this a little bit. Boop, tap it on my face, boom. Yes. Anyways, if you're starting, if you're trying to focus on money and abundance, um, I've seen and I've worked with green candles in the past, and I've seen witches work with that in the past, and I always also watch them get like a lump sum of money, but it never grows, it never accumulates. That is not how I live my life. I want money and abundance to continue to come in. I don't want it to come in like a little wave, and then I have to do magic in order to bring it in. Uh, I'm not bragging, but and I'm not trying to jinx myself, cross, cancel, delete, but when I set magic and when I set my intention, I'm not thinking temporary, I'm thinking long term. So that's why my life has been abundantly filled and that's why I am thriving in this way because I'm not working with these like, you know, temporary things. I'm working with for my highest and greatest good forever, all right? So that's what works for me. That's what has brought in job opportunities and um, YouTube growth and my clients are amazing. My business is amazing and, and still growing, knock on wood, that that keeps on going and that there's blessings and protection around that. But that's what I want for you guys too and I'm not gonna hold back anything 
that's gonna stop you from being successful because your success is my success and my success is your success. At least that's how I see it. There's no need for competition and there's no need for me to keep secrets from you. That's why I'm making this video. That's why I'm putting myself out there. So that's why I work with white candles and silver candles or gold because it just comes from a pure place that is more lasting and has longevity versus if you're working with green or red. I've worked with red candles in the past in order to bring in relationships and they've always been impactful but very passionate and very like intense. And because of that, they didn't have the um, ability to grow and to be something of substance. So I've since moved away from working with the red candles when it comes to love, but or even pink, or even orange, because it just doesn't have the same result and outcome as me working with a white candle or a civil, silver candle or a gold candle. So that being said, you can get those types of candles anywhere. They don't have to be really, really long or big. I've, I've worked with birthday candles while I was traveling and I just felt the need to work my magic and to set my intention. So I ran to the grocery store and I just got like basic white candles and lit them and had amazing results within that space that it was that I was staying in under a week. So I encourage that from you, but of course, follow your vibe. If you personally gravitate towards working with color candles, then by all means, do it to it, girl, and do it to it big. But okay. The, uh, but what does make a difference is your intention and also what makes a difference is the oils that you're using to anoint your candle. I have my oils specifically, They're, it's a personal blend that I've created and that I work for myself and that I've used for myself that has worked time and time and time and time and time and time and time, and time again when it comes to drawing in a love relationship but or also infusing love into my current relationship. Um, what I use for myself is what I sell within my shop. I've since stopped sharing my recipe. Don't ask me for my recipe. I'm not sharing it ever. It stays between me and my family and that's it. Um, but yeah, so if you want a love spell or a money spell, let's say you're gonna be using this to draw in money. Let's say you're gonna be using this to draw in transformation and death. That's what the Pluto death oil is, is in order to just completely wipe out anything that doesn't serve you. I am probably going to be using this um, in the days to come on the new on the full moon because I'm getting over a cold and I want this cold to be completely wiped out. I want this virus to be killed, honey. So I'm gonna be using the Pluto death oil, oil in order to release that and I will be using um, a candle in order to do that, in order to set my intention with that. But for the sake of this video, um, I'm not gonna open this bottle and I'm not gonna use it to anoint my candles because I'm using these candles. They've, these candles have already been anointed with the oil that I wanted to use for the intention that I was setting. And I'm not gonna talk about that here because it's personal and it's private. But for demonstration, I'm just gonna show you, we're gonna pretend like we're doing a love spell today. And this is the oil that we're gonna be using. And if you need a love spell, just know that it's in my shop. And I don't think that I've sold out of it yet. If I haven't i'm at very low amounts and if i do sell out or if i have sold out just know that i'll be creating and i've only been creating on the weekends during the week is just me time um and projects other projects that is that i'm working on but just fyi for your information now when you are setting the intention and working your candle magic um you want to know exactly what it is that you are setting the intention for what what you're setting your intention for. One thing that helps with that is to write it down. There is so much power when it comes to words and your thoughts and writing it down from a physical thought. You, you bring it down to paper and there's magic that happens with that. It's very symbolic because you're taking a thought, you're taking your heart's desires and you're making them, you're giving them one step forward with physical, um, like actual physical manifestation because you're taking it and it's here on paper, giving it the next step, like kind of poking and prodding it to the next step of actual physical manifestation in tangible form, something that we could touch, we could feel, we could taste, whatever. So um, let's just say that we are trying to bring love into our lives. So you have your candle, whatever candle it is, and you take your oil after you've written down your intention and you write it down, number one, so you know exactly what it is that you want, but you're also building that energy up. So when you're writing down your intention, think about exactly detailed what it is that you want to come in and what it is that you're manifesting. If it's a love relationship, 
Um, let's say if you're drawing in your wife, what type of qualities does she have? Is she sitting on her floor in her New Orleans apartment um, talking about candle magic on this day wearing a green hoodie and a necklace and um, eyebrows on and a cold, a chest cold? Is that who she is? Is that what she's doing? <laughs> That's me if you haven't already, if you couldn't already tell. But, okay, I'm just kidding. But who? what are her traits? What are her qualities? What does she do for a living? What does she like? How does she make you feel? And then, you know, write down those traits. Let's say if it's a man, what are the traits of that? When the two of you guys are together, what does that relationship look like? What do you guys do together? What does your life look like? Do you have dogs together? Do you guys go for walks? Do you stay in and Netflix and chill? Or do you Netflix and chill? Do you know what I mean? Um, how is this the man of your dreams? Is this the love life of your dreams? Is this your marriage partner? Write all of those things down. Then take your oil. So I'm just pretend like I'm unscrewing the top of this love spell. And then just a drop will do, or maybe two. I like to um, focus on numbers in numerology. So two drops or three. Three creates um, holy trinity and also helps to bring things together easy, easily and effortlessly like a trine. And two is like balance and duality. So just follow your vibes with that. Sometimes you need three oils, um, drops of oil, sometimes you need two. But just kind of draw it when you're using your oil, your love spell oil, for this for this example it's a love spell, take the oil and draw it up, up the base of the candle starting from the base and draw it to you and just visualize that aspect of yourself, if this represents you, visualize the aspect of yourself, those qualities, those traits coming towards you as you're anointing the candle and do the same thing for your partner using the same amount of oils. Then you're gonna take herbs. Now, for example, I have these from my apothecary. These are rosebuds, and this is how it will come to you if you order them from my shop. You could use rosebuds, you can use linden, you can use um, hibiscus, and if you want me to make a video on like special oil um, herbs that I recommend that you use for love spells, I'm more than happy to do that. But again, don't ask me for what is in my love spell because I'm not going to tell you. It's very special though, <clears throat> and you'll never guess. Of course it has like the basic things, but it's more than that. And also my intention. Yeah, just a second. Sorry guys, I'm getting so used to filming on this camera and roughly around 22 minutes is when the camera shuts off because it's like, are you sure you wanna continue talking, Jess? Your video is getting a little wordy. And I'm like, yes, I'm sure I wanna continue talking. And yes, I know it's getting wordy. I'm ruled by Mercury, which rules words and communication. So can't stop, won't stop, homie. I'm just kidding, but yeah. So once you've used the oils in order to anoint the candle, that's when you want to take the herbs and make a base around it to surround it and also to press it on the candle. However, sometimes, most oftentimes, those little herbs kind of fall off. I don't, I don't get bugged out by that. I don't get worried by it. Just the fact that the herb touched it and that the energy of it was infused and that the base of the candle is support enough, at least for me and what I think. And also the herbs are in the, are infused in the oil. So the, it already has the benefits of that. Let me show you this beautiful love spell oil. Cause this is one of my favorites. You guys know how much I love relationships and I love love and light and all of those things. That's just a part of my nature and my being. Just take a moment and look at that. God damn. That's good. It's my favorite. I used to wear this all the time for self-love and for beauty and for attraction and it's never failed me. And also wearing it just kind of brings in opportunities and uh, it's been so good to me. I actually sometimes use this more than I use the money in abundance because just as a woman and feminine energy, it just works better with my vibe. So always follow your follow your spirit and follow what you know your how you're being guided because the universe is always looking out for you. Let me adjust that. Perfect. Okay. The other thing that you can also do when you're doing candle magic is using your herbs as an, a gift on your altar to put them. Um, you know, as like a sacrifice almost, and like a gift, an, uh, an offering, when you're, especially when you're working with love, because herbs are just so, they carry so much energy to them, and a lot of spirit loves the energy of um, plants and plant, it just living things in general. Um, so to give that as a gift or cups of tea or whatever is just so magical and really will take your candle magic process to the next level, at least in my experience. And it's just really nice. Like if I was a spirit, I mean, every spirit is different. Definitely, 
you know, listen to your vibes, especially if you're working with your ancestors, listen to them. What is it that they want? What are they directing your attention to? Like, what are they asking for? And give that to them. For example, I have my mom, for example, when she's working with her ancestors, she started realizing that her ancestors were asking for allspice, which is an ingredient found in a lot of Jamaican dishes, which is where our family is from. And she started listening to that and honoring that. So she'll see the, res the result and the benefit of that because she's giving that She's listening to what her spirit and her ancestors are saying. So of course they're going to say thank you and um, be generous and give back to her. So listen to what works for you and what your guides are suggesting and telling you and you'll get better results. Anyways, um, that being said, so you have your candles anointed. Um, if you guys want me to do a specific video on candle magic for love spells, I'm more than happy to do that because that process is a little different. I'm just, this is just in general. And if you want me to do a sp special specific video on money and abundance, um, and attracting that into your life, then I will do that as well. But for the most part, I usually light the candle every day for seven days. Um, usually around the same time, whether it be like one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning or eleven o'clock. Yes, I stay open. Yes, I stay awake that late. That's just my prime time hours. That's when I'm up and moving around and writing and being creative and working my magic. And that's when energy is strong for me. So that's when I work. Um, one thing that I want you guys to be aware of is to watch the candle and to watch the candle flame. Again, I'm not going to light this candle because these candles are already um, have already been anointed and they've already, you know, they're being used for a special specific purpose right now at this moment in my life. So I'm not going to ignite them and get that magic, you know, going right now and confuse the energy right now. I'm only using it to talk and to demonstrate. But I do want to take a moment really quickly to stop for a second and grab my phone because I wrote down um, all of what I could think of that I've seen with candle flames and what this the symbol symbolism of the candle flame looks like and I don't want you guys to be without that information because it is very important so hold that thought just for a second and I'll be right back so many notifications on my phone right now IG is popping if you're not already following me on Instagram what are you doing my Instagram is Bahati life and I'll link it down below okay so the first thing and if you guys are following me on Instagram and watching my stories, you'll see that last night I had the perfect example of a strong yes from, from a flame. And basically what that flame looks like, and I'm gonna use my hand as an example, is it's just this high, strong, steady flame. And one thing that I like to do, especially when I'm doing love spells, is I like to see the energy of each partner. So if one partner is stronger and higher and taller, um, and more steady than the other, then that person is more is more receptible. They're more apt to say yes. Their energy says yes to whatever it is that you're setting the intention for. Now, if one person is flickering and all over the place, they just they that is their energy. That's unsettled. It's changing. Who knows that they're coming or going? There's so much, but at the same time, I have seen that that energy can be manipulated, manipulated, and get steadier over time as you're working your magic because you're also helping that person, especially if you're setting intention for their highest and greatest good and to harm no one. You're helping them to make up their mind as far as what it is that they want in their life. And this blessing, you setting this intention and you working your magic, could be the biggest blessing in their life because they weren't able to do it. So just make sure that when you are are working with other people that you are setting their setting the intent that is harming no one and you should have no issues and no trouble but you'll also watch as a flame changes and it will give you signs and signals that this person says yes and this person is a little, little hesitant or this person is you know already open and their energy has already been open to it and this person is really really fighting it so that will show you who needs a little bit more extra work with being while being still respectful of what they want and their desires you can't force anybody i mean technically you can but that's um steering into um black magic which in my opinion you know don't do that but if you want to by all means but just realize that that shit's going to come back and bite you in the ass it does every single time you don't have you shouldn't be having to do you know be forcing anything especially um, you just shouldn't have to like there's so much abundance and people and amazing things in this life that you, there's no need for you to force or fight or provoke anything and if you're doing that then you need to have several seats that's just my opinion 
if the candle flame is low and kind of dull and weak, that is the energy of that person and that is the energy of what is around them. Let's say it's money or a job opportunity and it's low, it needs a little bit more focus, well, a lot more focus, it needs a lot more attention. And again, seven days of lighting your candle and setting your intention and focusing your intention will help to strengthen that candle and also strengthen that energy. And you should see it start to change. There have and, and to grow. There have been a few times in the past where um, the energy of that person, maybe it started off really low and small and almost insignificant and kind of weak. And then over time it starts popping and popping and popping as I'm doing my seven days. And then at the very end of my seven day ritual, the candle is strong and bright and tall. And then that person a week later just kind of shows up out of nowhere and just like, oh, hey, what's up? Yeah, I drew, I drew you in, welcome. <laughs> welcome welcome to my life you know what's up so what are your favorite colors you know what I mean so again if you do see a popping candle a popping flame this shows that that energy of that person is very changeable and it's very reactive so I have noticed that this person is open in a lot of ways or this thing is open to change and transform transformation and transition but you do have to kind of poke it and prod it along so that it can go from popping and being changeable and reactive to and maybe a little resistant because of maybe they're like well i don't know if i'm ready but i'm excited about it <laughs> like <laughs> you sending your intention you being like well this is what i want and if you want it then energetically say yes so then it's like okay I'll come in you know what I mean and then it gets stronger and then it's like yes meaning like whatever it is that you're setting the intention for is also becoming more um, apt to you know come into your life that's when it pops that's when you get that little pop the same thing is true when you get that um, flickering when you get that flickering dancing flame there's so much that is changing there's so much that is happening the energy is very receptive and um, open but at the same time we want to make it steady and we want it to make it a clear precise yes so this is where again you want to focus on seven days of, of lighting the candle every single day and don't miss a day um, of changing this energy and supporting it um, because that whatever it is that you're setting the intention for is considering saying a strong yes to you but it needs a little extra nudging and it also needs you to um, uh, Focus your intent on it, focus your will around it without uh, forcing it. Uh, if you have ever had a candle in a jar or anything like that, because some people do like to work with candle magics with that, um, if you have ever watched a candle break, um, meaning like the candle jar just cracks, uh, you want to stop. <laughs> That's when the energy around it is very powerful and very strong and very resistant and you don't want to force and fight and push this because it's like whatever it is, either it's just broke, meaning like something has cracked open, something has been released, not in a negative way. And it shouldn't be negative, especially if you're doing like spiritual baths and protecting yourself very often, especially as sensitive people. But when you have something kind of like just crack and break glass, the energy there is just so strong and so powerful and if I were you what I would do is I would just take a step back I would close the circle I would you know sage myself cleanse myself and say a prayer and just make sure that the energy around me is very positive and constructive and I'm not forcing or fighting anything and I would just wait again before I you know came back and approached it because you could have number one it could be in, like something just completely just changed as far as energy which can create incredible change in your life. So you just want to stay open to that and watch to see what happens within the next like two or three weeks. Or, you know, the energy is just so resistant and just so many forces are pushing against you that you just don't want to tread in territory that you shouldn't be treading. And especially when you th see things break like that, glass shatter or anything else like that happen, um, you just want to close up shop for the day. It's nothing to freak you out, but it is something to respect. Um, if your candle does go out, which that has happened <laughs> one time um, when I was setting the intention for something, it, the candle just flame just literally went out. <laughs> the spell is over. <laughs> um, for some people, you will they will light a match or they'll light the candle back up again. And that, you know, I respect that, but I also think that everything happens for a reason. If I see a candle flame go out, then the spell is out for the night and I'll just follow my vibes and my intuition as far as what we're gonna do next. 
Um, if I'm like day four or five of like a seven day candles um, ritual, then the next day I'll light it again. But if the candle goes out again, then I'll keep going for the seven days and I'll just watch, you know, watch to see what happens and watch what's up. For the most time, for the most part, sometimes the spell is over or that person or that thing is very guarded, very protective and out of reach for you. So just wait and see what happens. Don't force it, don't push it. Again, when you push things and you force things, you're entering into the space of like black magic. That's not, not, not something that I do, so I don't really recommend that for you guys. I can't believe, oh, if you see black smoke, when you see the black smoke coming off of a flame, which I have seen before, especially from one partner or one thing, that is negative energies, meaning like um, complications, opposition, resistance, inner, inner demons, inner conflicts, those things getting um, resolved and burnt off. So bless, bless that person and bless that thing and to help them to kind of release the demons that are stopping you. Now I say demons, but um, I'm not saying actual demons, but whatever it is that's stopping them and holding them back from coming to you, just say a prayer and bless them and help to support them as they're transitioning and going through their own transformation in their life because the black smoke is suggesting that something is being released and let go of. Um, same thing is happening with white smoke, but it's a little bit more supportive and a little bit more positive so but again when I see white smoke I'm seeing okay we've got some change here we've got some things that are kind of burning off we have some things that we need to say some things that we need to do but the energy there is happening and usually we'll have like a flickering can't um, flame with that um, a lot of times I've seen that and at least from my experience when I'm working my candle magic and the, the smoke starts to turn white all right, so I feel like I pretty much covered everything. One thing I, one question I do get a lot is just, do you blow out your candle? Do you snuff it out? And everyone is different. There are times when I'm working my magic and I feel okay with blowing it out. And there are times where I lick my fingers and I put it out using my two fingers. Um, at the risk of burning myself, but if I ever do burn myself, I'm like, whatever, it's the sacrifice. It's the sacrifices that we make in order to get the things that it is that we, we want. And if I have to walk around with a little burn on my finger, then it's a reminder of that magic, the power of that magic that I did the night before, and it's a reminder of what's coming into my life. And I'm not afraid of um, burns. You know, you guys know if you're watching me on my IG story, my female candle was burning me, like, at the time of me filming and putting it up on my um, sharing my story on IG she burned me three times but total she burned me five to six times and I was like you cheeky little bugger <laughs> so anyways um, I'm not afraid of burns but um, a lot of people do feel like a lot of witches feel like if you blow out the candle that you're blowing out the spell and that you're making that energy kind of dissipate I don't feel that way at all um, but you know follow your vibe with that and a lot of people do feel like as, as long as you're doing like a seven day candle ritual that if you snuff the candle out that you're just kind of putting it out and dimming it I just feel like that's like heavy energy kind of putting it out that's why I like to lick my fingers and um, use my fingers in order to pinch it out and then I'll be like be right back see you tomorrow all right so I hope that that makes sense um, when your candle um, burns down, you know, watch it and wait to see like how the candle wax falls. Does it fall most to the right, to the west? Does it fall mostly to the east? Does it fall to the north, to the south? This will also show you where the energy is coming from and also what the energy looks like. And when the candle wax starts to pull around the candle, especially if you're not moving it, watch to see what shapes the candle wax makes around it. Let's say it makes a, um, an, eye, an eye shape, then maybe this could be a signal to you to follow your intuition and to work with your third eye. Let's say it makes a heart and that's an amazing sign to see. Let's say it makes a star shape and that's also a really good sign to see. So just keep your keep your intuition open and watch to see how the candle wax pulls and then listen to your vibes because your guides and your spirit are constantly talking to you and constantly trying to be in communication with you and give you messages and signals and um, yeah, keep it moving. All right, you guys, so I hope that makes so much sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Also, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because now that I'm in New Orleans, I'll be filming a lot more frequently. And also, Sacred Circle Tarot School will be opening for another semester. And for those of you guys that are already enrolled, you have new videos coming, so our Facebook page and our Sacred Circle um, environment will be lit very shortly. Just as soon as I get over this virus, this virus in my chest, 
which I will knock out this week using my Pluto death oil and some candle magic. Once I get over this virus and I'm able to kind of film more because this takes a lot of energy, believe it or not, then I'm more than happy, to, well, I will be making more videos on a more consistent and steady basis because you guys already know, last, well, all of 2018 saw incredible change and transformation and growth and blessing for me in my life, but it slowed me down as far as what I was able to do and what I was able to give as, uh, as much as I wanted to and as many ways that I could. But now that I'm in this space right now where I'm able to kind of slow down and give more, then that's exactly what it is that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna give more. So again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for your comments. Your thumbs up of this video makes a fucking di oh, part of my French. It makes a huge difference. <laughs> and also your comments make a difference and definitely when you share this video. So thank you again so much from the bottom of my heart and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.